Capri Slay. So you want to buy, huh? All right. You want to buy a house. You're looking for your home. First thing you need to do is contact the financial institution of your choice that you want to go through for the loan. And you need to ask them for a pre-approved letter of how much they will authorize you for a loan. You want to know that. You don't just want to go out and say, oh, I found this house nice. And then the, loan, the company's like, uh, we only going to give you a loan for this much. So I don't know how you're going to get that unless you got cash for the difference. So it's good to know how much the financial institution is going to authorize you. And when you have a pre-approved letter and you contact a real estate agent, they're like, oh, we got a pre-approved letter. So I need you to look up houses this amount and below. And the agent's like, oh, you ready. Okay. The second thing I need you to do after you find out how much you're authorized to, to get from a financial institution is I need you to call up another company, um, the company of your choice that you think that you're going to go and get homeowner's insurance from. So you want to ask them, I need to know approximately, I'm thinking about buying a home. I need to know approximately how much homeowner's insurance um, is going to cost. And they're going to ask you approximately how much the house is because they need to know homeowner's insurance covers rebuilding the house, if it was destroyed, like say a tornado or hurricane came through and just wiped it out. Homeowner's insurance has to cover to rebuild the dwelling and the property that was inside the dwelling or on your property, period. In the grass, you could have had a shed or anything like that. So this is why you need to know how much your property is worth. Okay, so then they can give you an estimate of what they believe how much homeowner's insurance would possibly cost. You need these things because a real estate agent or whoever is only going to give you or a financial institution, they're going to be like, oh, your principal and interest is only going to be this. Okay, if you're a first homeowner like I was when I got my first house, I'm thinking that's what my mortgage payment is going to be. No, your mortgage payment consists of the principal and interest, which is the principal of how much you got the house for. So say the house is $200,000, okay? So that's the principal that you owe the bank. But the bank's going to charge you interest. It ain't 0% interest-free. So principal and interest is how much the house costs plus the interest that the bank is going to charge you. Also, it consists of your escrow account, which is the county tax bill, and your homeowner's insurance. So you're like, oh, I can afford that. I can afford that. And I tried to tell my cousin, like, I don't think you can afford these houses you're going to. I said, did you look up the taxes, how much they pay on the taxes? Because the taxes of what they pay in a year on that property, you have to divide that by 12. Add that monthly amount onto the principal and interest. Also, the homeowner's insurance has to be, that monthly value has to be added on to, to the um, principal and interest. Also, that is your complete mortgage amount. And it fluctuates because listen to what I'm saying. The county tax bill, they're charging you tax for the land your house sits on. So that can fluctuate. If the market goes up, then your county taxes go up. The market goes down, county taxes go down. Your property value goes up. Think about it. Your homeowner's insurance goes up because they have to replace the house, rebuild it if it's destroyed. So it's not like a car note or anything else. Your mortgage payment can fluctuate based off the county tax bill or your homeowner's insurance. Your principal and interest will stay the same, but not your escrow. Not at all. Yes, buying a house. You have to have all the other research done first. I've only bought houses in two different states. So you have to look up the particulars of your area, your county, your city, your state. This is not to go for everybody. Understand, I'm only speaking of my experiences and sharing my experiences. It might be similar to yours. Basically, some people say, look, I want a mortgage payment to be this much and that's it. We can't afford anything 
higher than paying this much a month. Okay, that's not how mortgages work. So if you have a max out amount, I would not pick a place that's at the max out amount because your county tax bill and your homeowner's insurance could increase. So if you want some wiggle room for it to increase over time because your property value went up or your land value went up, then do not figure out, oh, I don't want to pay any more than $2,000 a month. But then when everything's said and done, principal interest plus your escrow adds up to exactly $2,000 a month. You would hope your property value would go up, but if it does, your mortgage payment's going to go up. And how they did me the first time it happened to me was they gave a letter in the mail, only gave me 30 days. They said, pay us this money now, the county tax bill or homeowner's insurance, pay us this increase right now. You have 30 days to pay it to us, or we're going to increase your payment to this. So they were going to increase it regardless. But if I didn't give them the money up front now to pay the bill that's due, they was going to increase it drastically. So it was either give us this $2,000 within 30 days or your mortgage payment is going to go up by hundreds of dollars. I said, what? I gave them that $2,000. It was out of the blue. I didn't even know that that could happen. So I'm letting you know just in case. Oh, I can afford that. Mm, think about it. The other thing is what rate to pick, adjustable rate or fixed rate. Uh, if you ha if you don't know by now, I'm a safe and secure person. I don't really go with risk. Adjustable rate from what I understand, again, do your own research. Adjustable rate is say like it's an arm rate. That's what they call it, uh, um, arm. Uh, adjustable rate, say the arm rate is for five years, which means it's fixed for that five years. After the five years is up, whatever the market is at that day, when your arm ends, that's the rate you get. <laughs> so I'm like, nah, bro, I'm not doing that. So the arm rate looks good. But if you plan on being in this home long term, I'm not doing no arm. I'm doing fixed. So I've only done fixed. I've never done arm. Like I said, do your research if that's what you want to do. I don't know much about arm. That's what I heard about it. Buying a house is not like buying a car. So you want to come in at the rate that you want for the long run. Uh, again, I bought a house. It was at one rate, like say seven and a half. And then they came out a low rate, like 6%. I was like, oh, let me get that rate. Because I refinanced my car before for a lower interest rate. So I was like, oh, let me get that rate. They was like, you got to pay closing costs. Whoa, wait, why? I already did that once refinancing your house or getting a home equity loan, a second mortgage, which I discussed in debts. Doing that is like buying your house again. There's closing cost fees um, that go with that. Now, some organizations will waive a lot of the fees, but there will be some fees redoing the title and all this other stuff. There's some fees you just can't get away from. Again, you might find somebody that waives the fees, but normally when you try to refinance your house or get a home equity loan, you have to pay closing cost fees. So what I tell people is go into the home with the rate that you want to be at for the long haul. So say the market is 7% interest, right? Say, say, say that's the market across America. That is the best lowest rate out there. You can buy the points down. Google this. You can buy the points down, which means you can lower the rate by buying it down. So you basically paying money to get a lower rate. Okay. So there are mortgage calculators out there. A lot of people, when they come to talk to me about buying their first, first home, they were like, oh, I'm going to put a down payment of 10,000. I said, do not ever put a down payment on the house for every 10,000. It only takes down a hundred dollars off your mortgage payment. So I said, don't do down payment. Put it in a mortgage calculator. Buy down the points. Get a lower interest rate. So put it in a mortgage calculator. Put ten thousand down on, and the house costs this much. Ten thousand down and seven percent interest rate. See what your principal and interest is going to be. Turn around. Put zero dollars down. Right. Put zero dollars down, and lower the interest rate to six percent, and then see what your mortgage payment is going to be. 
it'll be cheaper to buy the points down. Now, if you got any money left over after you buy the points down, because after a certain point in time of buying the points down, it gets too expensive. So I bought it down to, I was like, ooh, no, I'm not trying to spend that amount of money. So I said, let's just go up to one before that. Let's go to 4% and do it to 4%. Now, if I still had money left over that I was willing to put money down, then yeah, you can put that money towards the down payment. But if you got a set amount of money to put as a down payment, don't do it. Use that money to buy the points down to get you a lower interest rate. Trust me, go in at the interest rate that you want for the long haul. You don't want to refinance and pay closing costs again. Okay, so if the rate is just so good and you want to refinance, do not listen to the financial institution or don't don't listen to them banks. Don't and I'm saying banks, credit union doesn't don't listen to them. They'll be like, oh, okay, get this good rate. Now, say you've been paying on your house for five years. I'm giving you this as an example. You've been paying on your house for five years and you had a 30-year loan. So, you have 25 years left on that loan, right? A great rate comes out. You can't beat it. It's going from 7% to 2%. The market is great, right? So, you want that 2% pay to closing costs is worth it. And it is. They'll be like, okay, so you're going to do a 30-year loan. Hmm, what? Huh? No. I only owe 25 years left on this loan. Why would I do a 30-year loan? Oh, well, your mortgage payment will go down to this if you do a 30-year loan. Think about it. you already been paying for five years. They're going to try and dazzle you and sprinkle that lower mortgage payment in front of you, but you're paying that five years again. If you do another 30-year loan, you just lost the five years you just did. So if you look and calculate for the long run and tell them to calculate it for you, that's their job. Tell them, calculate, how much would I pay the bank if I start over with a 30-year loan, even if it's 2%? How much? Because when you get the paperwork in the mail, it tells you loan this much, interest this much. If you make all the payments, all 30 years, you don't, you don't make extra principal payments. If you make all the payments at the end of 30 years, you would have paid this amount of money for your house. Okay. So ask them to do it. They know it. So I said, no, I'm doing a 25-year loan. I'm not doing a 30-year loan. I want a 25-year loan at 2%. Actually, I had only paid the house in two years. So I owe 28 years. But I did a 25-year loan. I said, in the long run, I save money by doing a 25-year loan and not start all over with a 30-year loan. You trying to, oh, you save money a month. No, but in the long run, I did save money a month because I paid you another extra five years. It's like I've been paying on this house for 35 years. No, no, no. You're not going to get extra years out of me of paying you anything. Tell them to do the math. Period. That's the job. Because they tried to argue with me and then when I showed them I had some intelligence, like, you're not about to hoodwink me. They were like, you're right. You do save more money if you go pay us for less years than if you was to start all over with a 30-year loan. If you're looking at it that way, then yes, it is less money out of your pocket if you go for least amount of years. Well, if you got money like that, got smart with me. If you got money like that, then just let's do a 15-year loan. I said, man, it's, hmm. I'm trying to be professional. So I'm just let it go to your imagination what I told them what to do with that. I learned in certain states, um, well, just one state, um, I thought it was weird. Um, somebody said, when you're buying a house, you need a lawyer. I well, for what? And they said, you get a lawyer because the terminology in, in the paperwork, you just don't understand. So lawyers, I said, yeah, that's what the internet is for. I never heard of that. And it's common in this state. And I'm not going to say the state name. They know who they are if they're listening to this. You know, I've never heard of that. If you don't understand something, the real estate agent needs to explain it to me. Or I, or the internet. I can Google it on the internet. But it sounds lazy to hire a lawyer when a real estate agent. But what was told to me, this real estate agent didn't know what the stuff meant in the paperwork. So that's why they said get a lawyer. I said, oh, <laughs> I need a new real estate agent. If you don't know, you giving me the paperwork and you don't know. Okay, so no. Mm -mm. So you have an estimate how much 
your homeowner's insurance going to be. You have a pre-approved letter from the bank. Your real estate agent has found some houses um, and you think this is your dream home or whatever. But ask the real estate agent, I got some houses to look for you. Give us the addresses because you want to look up those addresses and see how much taxes have they paid on the house. So you want to do the math, you know, first. You know, you want to figure out how much your mortgage payment is actually going to be. And you need the homeowner's insurance amount. You need the tax amount. And then you need the principal and interest of that. So that's what those calculators for. So we have all that. We know what we're looking for. We found our house. We're in our house. Guess what? Congratulations. You just became the landlord. Now, by law, I'm assuming is in most states and in, in the states of people I know that have bought a house. Um, whoever you bought the house for them, they have to have a warranty on everything in the house, all the appliances and stuff like that for one year. After that, you don't have any warranties on the appliances in the house. So what I've heard some people do is get a home warranty. That covers the whole house. Okay. And there's a deductible, um, possibly a trip fee paid, possibly a fee on labor or parts. Um, but they have a home warranty on everything. So it doesn't matter where the appliances or whatever, or the central air system, or a furnace it doesn't matter where it was purchased from one store it was purchased from home warranty loan covers the house i don't have that i have a maintenance plan the maintenance plan is covered on each individual item i bought so i went and bought something from a store all my stuff came from one store so um sears um but i don't have any good things to say about sears right now um with the with the maintenance plan that i have on each one of my appliances yes nothing but really great things to say because on the maintenance plan, I don't pay a, a trip fee deductible. I don't pay for labor costs. I don't pay a percentage of parts, uh, nothing. I pay the maintenance fee on each individual item that I purchased from Sears. And so when they come out, I don't care if they have to come out 50 times and trust me, I'm like, it's still broke. Come out here. They ended up replacing it because one of the maintenance guys, they sent out there and they said, if we was to buy all the parts and what I'm going to charge you for labor, it's cheaper just to give her a new one. And they gave a new one. So I pay maintenance. That's how I do it. Um, you either way, home warranty, maintenance, whatever. And you can be like, oh, I'll just pay as I go. As stuff breaks down, I'll just bring it in and pay as I go. Yeah, I didn't do that. So, but it's your choice. You know, just understand that when this is what happened to me right before one of my daughter's birthday parties, she was young. I was having a house party and everything. And this, this real life story, I went to the basement and I saw a puddle of water. And I'm like, where's this water coming from? It was coming from the water heater. So I called and I was just like, how can you fix a water heater? They said, no. They said, that's like finding a needle in a haystack. We don't know where the hole is at coming from, whatever. So I went to Sears to buy me a new water heater. I was like, oh, this ain't bad. Yeah, give me this, this drawing right here, this big drawing right here, $200, right? Like I said, this was years, years ago. I said, yeah, give me this thing right here. So I'm thinking $200 ain't bad. Her birthday party is literally a week away. I done spent all this money on everything else prepping for that. By the time I checked out, because they was like, they had what it cost. They had um, to the delivery fee. They had the haul away fee and the installation fee. And then they are like, do you want a warranty? I'm like, yeah. So at the end of the day, it was like $600. One week away from my daughter's birthday party. This is why I said you can't have when you do your budget and you only got $25 left over. You can't, you're not ready to buy a house. Like this stuff happens. You are the landlord. When something gets broke, you fix it, you know? So if you don't have any extra money to do a home warranty to pay the trip fee or whatever, if you don't have that, you're not ready. Let somebody else take care of it. Let the landlord apartment complex, whatever, your mama's basement, somebody basement, you know, but understand 
Thieves happen. Leaks. Waters happen. Oh, water. That's nothing. If you don't get a separate meter on the outside of your house, when when water flows, they charge you for water and they charge you for sewage. I'm like, hold up. But I put that water in a cup. Why you charge me for water and sewage every time I turn on the water? They don't know that you put that water in the cup. So think about it. You water in your grass. They're charging you for water and sewage when it's going into the ground. So the only way to get charged for water only is to get a separate meter put outside your house, a separate water meter. So you'll have an in, in-house water meter and you'll have an out-house water meter. Because my friend taught me that. He said he was just watering his grass and watering and that bill came in over $1,000. He said, for what? For water? <laughs> I thought water free. <laughs> so then he's... They found out, it was like, no, you need to get a separate meter for your outside, and then we won't charge for the sewage. But all water used on the inside, it charged water and sewage. That's why I, I, I helped so many people out that done stayed here. One of my sons decided that spit belongs in a toilet. And this was before the energy efficient toilets. So this is the old school bowl that fills up with water. He was spit and flush. Oh, you, you done lost your mind. You better go outside and spit. Spit outside. <laughs> you, wh why don't you spit in the sink? Oh, I thought that would be disgusting if you're sick and have a cold or flu and spit in the sink. Don't you spit when you brush your teeth? Don't you wash dirt and grime off your hands in the sink? Literally, it didn't make any sense. I don't care. Everybody knows who my older son is, you know, that's in my family. So, yep, I'm talking about you, idiot. Oh, my bad. Off subject. Bye-bye. Can you tell I forgot? Because I put my hair up. So, you have a home. Guess what? Check into your communities, your charitable communities. Charity can come to your house and pick up items, clothing items, old bikes, whatever, furniture, old furniture you're giving away. Check into the communities and they can come straight to your house. No longer do you need to pack it up in your car and deliver it. Also, know what you pay for. Inside of paying for water and sewage, sewage is also trash. So guess what you're authorized? Bulk trash pickup. Every county, city, state has different rules. So it doesn't make any sense to tell you the rules of mine. Um, but... So you have items that are damaged, whatever, you got new stuff, and you want to have bulk trash. In my area, you can only do 10 items, and you have to name the specific items. Because if they show up there, and like some of your neighbors try and throw some trash out with it, they won't pick it up. They're only going to pick up the 10 items listed for your home address. So that's how it works in my area. But I found out in another state, they was like, just give them a heads up that it's going to be put on the curb with regular trash. And just put it out there. So, like I said, you have to call up for your area for a bulk trash pickup. And I don't pay anything extra because I already pay it in my fees.